Greetings, seekers after enlightenment. Yes, it is the Irish fellow. And as you can see, I'm at the fire already. So, pull up a stump. Let's spark this blunt up. And gab a little. I must first give thanks and praise to Yeshua, who allowed me to wake up this morning and let me come back home from the hospital today. I am blessed. And in honor of the passing of G. Gordon Liddy, this video may be showing up on YouTube, but at least for tonight, the real name is Radio Free America. It is not a good environment for men these days, especially men like us. Well, you know, you ignorant bitches may want my life, but it's not going to come cheap. I'm going to have an honor guard in hell if I have to, but we don't need to go there. But, you know, I've spent a whole lifetime learning the intricacies of stealth mode. But there's one thing I'm going to do before I disappear almost entirely, and that's open carry. So imagine a 20 gauge sawed off shotgun and a floor length robe. That's right. And for the convenience of interested law enforcement authorities, I'll have my own measuring tape right there so they can measure for themselves to know I'm perfectly legal. And I'm not going to do this just to show off. I, I got to admit that that's part of it. But I'm exercising my constitutional right. The elites are programming their drones. You've seen all these shootings happen re happening recently. They're trying to scare you into surrendering your rights. And you, you got the low-grade whiners, too. The ones that say, oh, he's wearing a gun. All I want to do is get my caramel uh, non-soy soy latte in, in, in peace. He's scaring me. Help, oh, police, police. Yeah. Well, you know, whiner, I won't be in a business that doesn't support the Second Amendment anyway. And I know your candy ass wouldn't be in there, so shut the fuck up. And yeah, see, Panera Bread, I remember you said that Mickey Mouse bullshit. That's why you've never gotten a penny from me. Ooh, oh, yeah, yeah, I went there. And you know, there's not just drones that the FBI are, you know, supposedly intercepting them and making them harmless. No, they're making them into weapons as, as tools of the state. And there's drones everywhere trying to get you to give up your rights. Like that bitch Fauci. First there was that two mask Mickey Mouse bullshit. And now they're saying there's a new undetectable strain of COVID that doesn't show up on the test. Well, how the fuck do you know about it if it don't show up on the test? See? Obvious question nobody's asking. So now you're going to have to wear a mask anyways? Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. And I got the verbal pimp hand for some loud ass clown named Tariq Nasheed. I have no idea who the fuck he's with, but he's a little ignorant bitch. He's screaming that the, the boulder suspect is white. That, oh, Syrian, Muslim, all that. Oh, that don't mean shit. He's culturally white, so and don't try to change the subject. See, and that, that's just an excuse to try to start a race war. The ignorant bitches him, like him are going to lose. And innocent people like me are going to get double tapped because of him running his candy ass mouth. Like to break my foot off in that ignorant bitch's ass. 
and now we got we got the mark of the beast also known in this incarnation as Shoyo Pepas. Yeah, Nazi Germany in the 1930s or New York City 2021, I guess. It's equivalent. And, and the leftists don't seem to see what the problem is. It's none of your fucking business where I go. It's none of your business whether I've even gotten a fucking shot or not. And see? Yeah, now, vaccine passport. Or you can't get into Fred Meyers to do grocery shopping. If your card even works anymore once they know you haven't taken the vaccine. Which I have not. And despite being in the hospital twice for extensive stays over the last two months, bitches, I'm still COVID negative. Yeah, suck on that. And, ah, uh, it, it, it's so frustrating. Because regular people like us are just getting thrown under the bus and nobody gives a fuck. It's all about the elites and their problems or them trying to program us to act a certain way. Actually helping people that have issues. Suck shit. You're lucky if that's happening at all. And it's enough to make a man with empathy want to double tap himself just to deal with the pain. <sighs> Damn, I hang on, I gotta I, I gotta hit the blunt here and, and calm down. It ain't easy smoking weed when you got stitches, man. Well, actually, I have medical superglue and staples. Yes. <sighs> All right, now. Oh, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a nasty situation. And it's made worse by the fact that men like us, we can't go to a psychiatrist, psychologist, and tell them about our situation, because we're already so far outside the norm that they're automatically going to give us that lethal combination, padded cell, straight jacket, and Thorazine drip. Yeah, they're going to call us deranged right from Jump Street. Yeah, so fuck them. One needs empathy in order to, to deal with people. There are cases of sociopaths around and they're, they're not pretty. But that's not who we are even though the media and culture are trying to portray it that way. We have empathy. That same empathy when turned inward towards self can make the difference. It helps you realize your innate value as a man. And once you do that, you can walk away from useless entanglements. And you begin building your own self-rescue manual. It does take time and it always takes longer than you wanted to, but you see that you do not have to just survive a storm of negative energy. You can transform it. Shed your past as a snake sheds its skin.
The way forward is by remembering, as I've said before. I look at the past for analytical purposes. I remember the times when I was feeling whole and happy. And in the blue-pilled existence, that state was often minor and transitory and drowned out by negative events so much that couldn't remember them happening for uh, at times but you know you have to remember that trauma abuse loss and neglect because you cannot let that pain fester within you you have to rant and purge because even ranting into the wilderness helps you share that pain and allows it to dissipate and then it won't keep calling you back like I've said elsewhere you don't need to drink poison just because you're thirsty and once you realize that God has closed the doors behind you you know it's for a reason why are you turning back and trying to open that door again what's on the other side is not for you turn your flat ass around and look forward that's where you should be going And along with this, you've got to do ruthless self-analysis. You have to. Even when you have schizoid tendencies like me. Which we will discuss in another video. I say now only integrity is telling yourself the truth and honesty is telling that truth to others and along with that being able to, to like the man you see in the mirror you you learn to obtain a measure of detachment and it helps when you realize that true happiness is from enjoying the present and wisdom comes from that detachment and you know occasional contentment you know yes that I, I, I'm happy but I'm not always content no because I got too much I want to do on this side of the veil I, you know, I, I've been known to sit and contemplate my navel, uh, pass out. <clears throat> oh, did I say that out loud? Yeah, but, no, no, but you can't do that all the time. And it's been made more stark, you know, with my little speed bump having to go back in the hospital for a few more days. And I realized that I, you know, I should have stayed a couple more days the first time around and I would have been in better shape. But things actually worked out for the better. I, my condition is much more stable. I've had another week of healing in a hospital environment where they've been checking on me on the regular, you know. And it's given me time to think about some of these deep philosophical questions of existence because here I am and it looks like I've, I've, I've got that extra 20 years damn son and you know uh, sure I'm not entirely healthy but that's just the state of body you know in in my mind and as a composite organism of body, mind, and spirit I'm engaging in 
wellness. And wellness is a state of being. So, I, I, I have other stuff I want to talk about. But this is the, just about the end of the scripted material. So, for you ladies. You know, uh, believe me, I'm a completely disinterested observer. You're louder, nastier, ruder, and there's more ink. And y'all shop for men now like you're shopping for a pair of shoes. So, just remember... Some of us real men recognize truth. We know a real man, which you don't want, is not chasing disease peace leave, but their dreams might drop. So, uh, so here I am, and, you know, uh, my, my little speed bump, you know, it, it, it put me back in the hospital for a few days, but I got lucky. I have a new feeding tube that's a slightly, whoops, excuse me, slightly smaller diameter, and it's a little less intrusive. I actually feel decent enough so that if I took anti-nausea medication, which I have, I could drive. Not not enough for work, but I could drive myself on a short errand if I wanted to. I will. I, I'm not. I'm not quite ready to do that yet, though. And I'm not quite ready to walk a, a far distance. But I will be doing my. I, I will be shifting into recovery mode starting tomorrow. I uh, I have uh, I have six weeks of restrictions. Now I have this feeding tube, and it's giving me a a nutrient solution, and it's a uh, it, it's going straight from the bag through a little pump machine down the tube so I can't taste anything I could because I'm filling my own uh, home setup now but I don't care I don't you know I don't need to smell it I don't need to taste it you know it, it it's good so I figure now if I was under a continuous speed of 60 milliliters an hour like they like the doctor wants me to I'd be getting about 1700 calories a day which is more by by sometimes quite a bit than I usually ate on the regular. So I'm going to be gaining weight, but I want it to be quality weight. So I'm giving myself some restrictions. Now I'm actually right now I'm only running at ten, but that's because I'm eating other stuff. Now I've been given a, some dietary restrictions. And it's the same as uh, gastric bypass patients have. So, I've already made a list of everything that's split into stages. So I know what I can eat without uh, risking any internal damage. So I, I will quickly give y'all an example here. And my ex-wife and two of her sisters underwent this surgery already so I, I, w I knew what was going to happen and it don't scare me they like I can already eat things like jello popsicles broth kool-aid flavored waters and protein protein drinks and then uh, stage 2 yogurt pudding frozen yogurt fudge sickles sta stage 3 Applesauce, peanut butter, bananas, and cottage cheese. See, we're good. That stuff I ate all the time anyway. Yeah, that stage four is eggs. I get my eggs back, you know, in, in about a month. I, I can hang 
I can hang till then, you know. And it's like, yeah, man, this, this is great. And because I'm eating so much less volume at the moment, I'll be able to keep track of calorie intake and such. So, I'm off work for six weeks and I can only lift 10 pounds. But, I will be experimenting with all my exercise forms I know. The tough part is though, that everything involves the core, so I'm gonna have to do a lot of static yoga poses and such. And lean on chairs or the couch or something, but I, I gotta exercise. And I can do all the walking I can stand. So I'm 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 gonna be a walking some bitch. So I, I'll be keeping track of all that. So there, there is no doubt, you know, that, that the day will, will come where I will be eating regular food and, and regular meals again, just, just smaller portions. And I, I got no problem with that. I'll be almost like a cow grazing. I, I used to do that when I was a teenager when my metabolism was in overdrive and I was eating all the time. So, I'm on, I'm on the road, I'm on the road to physical health. I'm also on the road to mental health. And I know that both of these are being sustained by spiritual power because God is blessing me on the regular. So here I am in Boise, but th this isn't home. I decided, you know, like, like I said earlier on this playlist, that home is somewhere I want before I shuffle off this mortal coil. And I decided I, I it don't have to be much. I hell. If I if I could find some used uh, trailer somewhere put it on a, a little piece of land someplace. And just just enough for me to grow a couple vegetables and have a have a little workshop. That's all I want. Oh, and a man cave. You know, that's it. I don't need much. Now, holding the truth hostage has said that the time may come for men like us where we will have to be mobile to survive. So, I am working on that option for the rest of the year as well. I have a lot of survival equipment that I need to assemble into a mobile unit. And... You know, sometimes, like the man said, you got to bug out with what you have. So that's what I'm going to do. But all the junk from the disassembled RV around, I've got lots of metal pieces. I mean, I'll have to buy a welder. But that's no problem. I, I need a little welder. I, I got a hell of a generator that will run a welder. So I, I'm in good shape. So I will put something together. You know, I'll have a... At, at, at worst case scenario, I'll have the back of the truck to sleep in, you know, in the cab, and the utility trailer will have my equipment. And I can easily deploy things, deploy a stove, have a shower, have a nice big refrigerator, you know, propane, generator, gas, even uh, drinking water, you know. And with that split up, you know, with some of it in the in the bed of the truck, some of it in the trailer, I'll have room for tools and such. So, you know, it'll be a good thing that, to have in a base camp. So I figure I'll be ready for anything, man. And my plan is to have that ready by the end of the year. Because Boise, it is, it is the number one place to be, and it is showing growing pains. I have a few statistics to share with you. Now, these changes are just one year. The average price of a home was 342000 When people were selling their homes, they were usually getting 98.5% of their asking price, or about $8,000 profit. Now, only a year later, the average price is 450000 
Now the sellers are getting almost 105% of what they asked for, or 20 grand extra in their pocket. And the market is so hot that the time that a, a listing is on the market has shrunken drastically a year ago. Now we're talking the entire Treasure Valley, which has rich and average and poorer places to be, you know, good places, bad places, blah, 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 just like any place else. So, 30 to 55 days last year. Now it's 5 to 11 days. But, I want you to be aware of a couple other statistics that are just as telling. In the year 2000, an average home cost 163000 Now, that, that, is, that is a good chunk of change, but the average person was making $31,000 a year. Well, here we are now. The average home is 326000 but the average person is only making 35000 And you have to think that vehicle payments have skyrocketed in the same manner. And some people need big trucks to be able to haul equipment. And now, even for a, a cheap truck that's fairly new, you're paying 20 grand. For how many years? Yeah, five years is, is the usual now. It used to be three. And some places are offering seven year plans. It's ridiculous. So, I need to disappear. And I would like to relocate to Wyoming. And that, and now that might happen, see? Because I've got my new lease on life. One of the alternatives I was thinking about if I ended up having to stay here was to open a Mexican restaurant with my son. He, he learned Mexican cooking from his, uh, from his relatives. There is one family where... All of the girls married uh, Hispanic people, and they were taught authentic Mexican cooking. Oh man, bomb, bomb, yeah, buddy. Yeah, my son makes his stuff from scratch. But no matter where it will be, there will be a rule of three balance center. And I decided there, there are a couple things I gotta have when I get this business entity off the ground. There will be a cancer treatment gateway. So men looking for resources have, have one place where they can go. Where we have the latest possible information. And like, like I mentioned elsewhere. That we, our brothers, linked by testosterone and loosely by, by ideology. But no one is here to help us but us. So, I will be using my efforts to develop, uh, and I'm blatantly stealing the name from the Ada County Health and Welfare Office. They publish a, a little mimeograph booklet called a self-rescue manual. So that, that's what I'm going to do because you brothers deserve it. Ah. Yes, indeed. And, of course, you know, you know how life goes. It's like the man said, life is what happens to you when you're making other plans. But, it just so happens that I, I'm a, well, semi-retired. So, I got nothing better to do than to see how this turns out. Like I've said elsewhere, I'm the center of a hurricane of adventure and surprise. I mean, that. Uh, until I wrote the script, I didn't know what I was going to say. But that's just the way it turns out. I, I hope I'm being more coherent in my presentations now. And I did want to say one thing, but I threw away the paper way early and I don't have time to go dig and look for it. But I'll try to remember what I said. I've been... Uh, 
peeking at Facebook memes and my uh, my responses over the last day or or so and the memes I've seen form the basis of this script and there was one that one meme I saw that made me stop in my tracks and it said not all storms are there to sow chaos some are there to clear your path and I have to say that is damn true So, thank you for hanging out with me for a hot minute. Uh, sorry. Uh, next time, I'll I will bring out s'mores. I don't. I wouldn't mind if you ate one in front of me. So, until the next time, I still say, when one teaches, two learn.